Hi there, this is Jennifer Vanderbeek from scrapsoflife.com and in today's video I'm going to show you how I made this fairy house out of paper clay and an empty bottle. So paper clay, if you're not familiar with it, is like paper mache, you know, we used to, maybe you did that as a kid or, or as an adult, the thin paste that you run the strips of like newspaper or whatever through. Yeah, this is very similar to it. Instead of newspaper though, it's like paper pulp and it's already mixed into the sticky stuff to make an air dry clay. And it's really fun to work with if a little bit messy. <laughs> And it'll stick to just about anything, I think. So putting it on this bottle is no big. It's really fun. I love, it's my favorite air dry clay. It really is. So the brand I'm working with today is Prima Paper Clay. You do need to knead it a little bit to kind of work it. And then what you're not working with at the time needs to be kept away from air and preferably slightly moist. So you see I have a dish towel over the side. It's damp, it's inside of a sealable plastic bag. And that's where I'm keeping the clay that I've opened but not currently using yet. Now, you want to make sure that you keep some water on hand because you're going to need to put that on your hands a little bit, not too much, otherwise it'll be hard to keep up with the clay at all. It'll just kind of slip right out of your hands, but you do want to keep some moisture on your hands. It's also very useful for smoothing out the clay as you're working with it. For this project, I'm going to be emulating bark. So super smooth is not my primary goal, but I do still wanna make sure that I have a somewhat even surface. Uh, well, even is relative. <laughs> This is an old champagne style bottle, but it had, I think it was peach Moscato to be honest. And it has these great ribs or, or ridges along the bottom part of the bottle. And so again, I'm, I'm playing that up with the clay. I'm emphasizing that with the clay as I cover the bottle and it's going to help my fairy house have a little bit of dimension when we're done. Now wrapping the bottle takes uh, it took about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour total. And it's good to just get this done kind of in one sitting because as you can see, my hands are getting coated with the paper clay residue. It comes off really easily though. It's water soluble. So just warm water and a little bit of soap and maybe a little bit of scrubbing because it, it just kind of sticks around. <laughs> but it is easy to clean up. Now you might notice that while I am covering the bottle, I'm leaving some spaces, I'm leaving some voids. Well, this is a fairy house and a house has windows. So I am leaving some spaces as I go to create the window openings. And then in a little bit, I will add like little awnings over them and, and do a little bit more shaping and defining of them. But for now, I'm just kind of making making spaces where it seems appropriate as I go around the bottle, just to kind of, you know, map out what I'm going to do. You don't need a ton of tools to work with paper clay. I have a set of, you know, standard clay tools, but the tools I used the most in this project were a cheap paring knife that the tip had broken off ages ago. So I put it with my clay tools and a plastic swizzle stick. <laughs> I, I'll use that later on to add some pieces to the wet clay. And then an actual clay tool that has a fine point on one end, I use that to add some texture once I finished wrapping the bottle in the paper clay. But those are the three tools I use the most. You can use a, a damp paintbrush to smooth out your clay and help shape it. Um, I, I've done that on more detailed projects, smaller projects, something like this that's easy enough just to get my hands in there and smooth it out with my fingertips, that works too. So once it's dry, paper clay can be painted, you can sand it, you can do you know more shaping, you can add pieces with glue. While it's still wet, all you need to do to combine pieces is just add a little bit of water and apply a bit of pressure. I'm using the swizzle stick to help apply and kind of shape the awnings over the windows. But you could add shutters, you could add anything else to the shape of the bottle that you wanted at this point before you let it dry. Once the awnings were on and I'd added the faux wood grain texture, I left it to dry overnight and then all the next day while I was at work and it was perfectly dry when I got home. So I would say go ahead and devote like an hour or so to covering your bottle, 
getting it the way you want it, and then leave it alone for a good 24 hours. Obviously, your climate and the temperature and I'm sure a whole bunch of other factors like humidity and whatnot could play a part. So just kind of be aware. But plan on a good 24 hours for the base structure to dry. Smaller parts will absolutely dry in a quicker amount of time. When it came to adding the wood grain lines, I did not worry a lot about precision. I didn't worry about making a specific pattern or anything like that. What you're wanting is these ridges, these grooves. And I would make some, I would smooth some out. I didn't worry if my like needle tool kind of skipped the track and, and, and ran along something else, or if I kind of veered off one way or the other, as long as the entire surface was covered with vertical ridges, I figured, you know what, I'm good to go because this is going to get painted. And overall, you just want the look, you want that look of the texture and it's really forgiving. You don't have to worry about keeping super straight lines because you know what? Nature doesn't keep super straight lines. What you're wanting is very organic. So, you know, just kind of have fun with it. Don't stress about it and be open to happy accidents. So paper clay does shrink as it dries. And when you've used a surface that isn't going to shrink with it, like this bottle, it's gonna crack. Now for me, I didn't mind that. In fact, I love the fact that it cracked. It looks like perfect crackle medium was applied to it and I couldn't have made it look better if I'd tried. Obviously, if you don't want this effect, then paper clay may not be the right option for you, but it worked for me. Now, one of the reasons why I left those windows, you can see, is I knew I was going to put lights inside. I have this little LED light string. I think I got it at Target, you know, in that little section in the front of the store. So I knew I was going to use the lights, but I needed some place to camouflage or hide the battery pack. So I looked around the abyss and I found this Ghirardelli tin that was just slightly bigger than the base of the bottle and plenty big enough underneath to house the light pack. And so I discarded the lid, but I'm using the, the base of it, the, the bulk of it. I used an awl and a mallet to pierce a hole onto the side and then I'll run the light string up through that, camouflage the light string with some uh, faux plants, some leaf sprigs, and that'll be how I get my lights inside of the fairy house. So before getting into the painting, I needed to clear out the windows. And this is a good example of how easy it is to clean up paper clay. So the paper clay is completely dry at this point, but there's a little bit of film over the window areas that I've left. So I'm just taking a soft paintbrush, dipping it in water, washing it over the window area, and then using a piece of paper towel to wipe it away. And that is really all it took to get that off of there. Once the windows were clean, I used a glass marker in a kind of a greenish yellow color to coat the windows. This frosted the windows a little bit and it will also lend a pretty greenish glow to the lights when they shine through the bottle. Nature is not one flat color. And in the past, I was guilty of just covering, painting something brown because trees are brown, right? I was never really happy with the way that turned out, of course. So I'm being patient and building up my color gradually. I'm starting with a light leafy green craft paint that I've thinned with a lot of water. And I am brushing it over the entire surface of the bottle. Now, because this is a very light wash of color, it's going to dry pretty quickly and I can move on to the second color, which is a combination of a very light brown with a touch of dark brown in there too. And again, I've thinned it way out. So we're talking like glaze level. And I'm going to put this light brown or medium brown over the green base coat. My thought process here was that wood is green when it's still growing. So I thought a light green undercoat would be appropriate under the darker brown shades. Because this is the second coat, I'm going to let it sit for a little bit while I work on some of the other accoutrements for the fairy bottle. 
So I decided I wanted a cluster of oyster mushrooms fitted around the neck of the bottle or along one side of the neck of the bottle. So I am just freehanding some little semicircles or, and you know flattening out the inside edge. And then I am thinning out the outer edge and crinkling it a little bit with my fingers to make it kind of wavy and ridged. And I'm going to set those aside to dry. Next, I want to make some toadstools from for near the front door. These are just going to be your traditional white and red toadstools. Think Smurfs and all that good stuff. The last thing I'm going to make is actually the door, and I'm just going to flatten out a piece and shape it with my fingers to fit just inside the doorway opening that I've left in the bottle. And then I'm going to let them dry, and then I will paint these off screen. The door I painted in the same way that I did the rest of the bottle, whereas the mushrooms I painted flat. And then I used some of the same medium brown wash to create some shading on it. I added a, th a third coat of glaze to the bottle. This is to deepen that medium brown color. And then while everything has a chance to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and work on the base. I'm using some dark green felt to cover the sides and top, or well, it would be the bottom <laughs> of the tin. Hot glue seemed the way to go here. It allows me to work quickly and make sure that the, the felt is adhered nice and tightly. I'm wrapping the edges so that when it's sitting on a bookshelf or table, the tin isn't going to scuff up whatever it's sitting on. It's also gonna allow it to move a little bit better if it needs to be moved. <laughs> And then, of course, the green kind of just makes it look like it's forest full floor or grass or something like that. Now, for the final coats, I'm going to use a very dark brown. I think this is um, actually burnt umber. Again, I've thinned it way out, so it's we're still working with it like a glaze. And I am going to take a little bit of time to direct some of the shadows. I'm going to make it a little bit darker uh, at the base of the bottle and concentrate some on the crevices around the awnings around the windows and in those valleys between the ridges that we pulled out from the bottle in the clay and just trying to make it look a little bit like where the shadows would go what what things would be darker and as well as just giving it an overall deeper shade. But still, because this is a very light glaze, the lower coats, the, the lighter colors below are still gonna show through. And I think that the ending effect is very effective. Now, I goofed when I was putting together everything, which I feel so bad about. But when I was putting it all together, I thought I was recording and I wasn't. And what I ended up doing was hit record after I'd walked away from my table. Oops. So let me walk you through what I did. I started by adhering the bottle to the base and then running the lights up the side, wrapping them with the sprigs cut from a flower pick, as well as some leaves. Yeah, uh, I wish I would have done that last. Because what I realized was that when I went to add the door and the oyster mushrooms along the neck, I needed that to be flat so that they could, they wouldn't just fall off the bottle. I was using a silicone adhesive that does not hold firm right away. You do need to give it, you know, a good day or so to set up. And so that's on me. I goofed. <laughs> <laughs> learn from my mistakes. But I use string as a gentle scaffolding to keep the greenery in place up the one side, which you can't see it because it's on the bottom right now. And then I laid it down and used a rolling pen and a bottle of ink and just anything I could find to prop it up at the correct height <laughs> so that the bottle wouldn't fall off the base and the toadstools and mushrooms and the door and everything would stay in place while the glue set up. I'm going to blame the head cold I've been suffering from for like the last week and a half and a hellacious work schedule as to why I goofed with the video camera. Thank you for understanding. <laughs> I absolutely love how this fairy bottle turned out. Is it perfect? Oh gosh, no. Is anything ever perfect? No. But then again, nature is not perfect. So I take some small comfort in that. 
I added a, a couple of silver toned fairy charms that I cut the little loops off of. I added one in a window where it's playing a flute. I added the other peeking out the door and I just love the way this looks. I'm going to enjoy the heck out of it sitting on my shelf. I might actually take this to my office and put it up on display up there just because I enjoyed making this so much and it makes me smile so much to look at it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this project half as much as I did making it. If you did enjoy it, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'd love to hear about what you're working on. And until next time, I hope you have a very creative day. Bye-bye.